Hi and welcome back. In this episode, we'll set up Objection.js library and create our first model, user model. Then we'll implement fake authenticate middleware and lastly we'll connect to view application to our API via proxy. So let's get started. So I'm in terminal in API project and here I will just add yarn add objection library and also objection dash password plugin for object objection library. This plugin will handle all the password encryption and also provides us with some nifty helpers for comparing passwords that we're going to use later. So now that we have it, we need to set it up. And to set it up, we need to go to app and basically what we need to do, we need to connect objection model to Kinex instance. So for that, we need to have Kinex itself. So we just import it and we need to have the model that we import from objection. Next, we need to instantiate this Kinex library and provide it the options from our Kinex file. But be careful here, because we can't require a Kinex file from Kinex file. Why? Well, because in Kinex file, we use environment variables and they are not defined yet. So we actually need to do it later after we initialize our environment variables. So I'm gonna leave comment here, objection setup. So here we have our Kinex file. Next, we can define our Kinex instance. So we'll have Kinex and we'll have Kinex file. And we need to take only one thing. And in our case, we take it from process dot and dot node env. And this node env is actually defined in package.json. Here you can see node env development. So this node env is development. So in Kinex file, we have this development stuff. And basically we pass this object to the Kinex. Okay. And lastly, we just need to connect model Kinex with this instance Kinex. And that's the objection configuration. Let's save it. So now we're ready to create our models. I prefer to create base model from which all other models will inherit. Why? Because I want to auto populate created at and updated at properties. So let's create models folder and inside of it will have base model.js. An objection model is just a class, let's call it base model, that extends from model. This model we require from objection and we already connected it right it's a singleton so here we can define anything we want inside of it and we do not forget to module exports base model okay so here i want to define two hook methods the first one will be before insert and the second one will be you guessed it before update so in before insert, I want to update created it and updated it. And in before update, I want just to update the updated it. Oh my, <laughs> that was mouthful. So first of all, I want to define now, and that's gonna be just the new date, which I want to convert to to ESO string, which is used by PostgreSQL. And then I can just make this created at, that equals to now. And the same thing goes for updated at. And in before update, I want to do the same thing, but without the created at update. So this is our base model. And we will inherit all our other models from this one. This way, when we insert something, it will auto-populate the date stamps for us, which is cool. So let's create user model, user.js. So I have objection model snippet for it. As you can see, uh, we have the base model instead of just the objection model. And then we have a class that extends from this objection model. And the one thing that we must provide is the static get method 
table name, which returns the users or the table name, basically. In our case, it's users. And then we export user model. The only thing that I want to do right away is just to enhance it with the objection password. So for that, I will require password from objection password and I will instantiate it right away just to save us time. So this way we have the password and all we need to do is just to wrap our base model into this password enhancer and basically just enhance our user model with this password functionality that we'll maybe cover a little bit later when we get to the authentication, the actual authentication stuff. So I'm gonna save it and we're good. Hey there, just a quick self-promotion. If you like what I do, find it valuable and want to support my work, I encourage you to go to gsfullstacker.com. There you can become a member for just $13 per month and you'll get access to all content that I've already published, plus 5 new episodes each week and access to Slack community where you can ask questions and get updates. You can cancel anytime, no questions asked. Link in the description. And now, back to the video. Okay, so now that we have the user model, we can define the current user route and fake authenticate middleware. So let's get down to it as well. So first of all, let's go to app.js and here where we have API routes, we're gonna create our first API route. So we'll have app use, we'll define it as a middleware that is mounted to API auth. And it will use the router file. So we will require it in line from routes out. Okay, so now let's save it and let's create routes folder and inside of it out file. Okay, so route express route is very simple. We just uh, require express and then we instantiate express router and then we export it. And now we can just define any kind of routes here. In our case, we want to get the get request, the get router. So I have again snippet for it, we have get, and we named it current user. It's not the restful one. And you can see that in my snippet you have the get and you have the async function. Because very often you will talk or query the database, and querying the database is asynchronous stuff. But of course we want this route to be authenticated, and for that we will use authenticate middleware like this. So this middleware will check the token in the request header and then it will enhance, if everything's okay, it will enhance this request object with user ID, which we can use right here. So for example, to fetch our user details, like const user equals to await, we're gonna query the database with the model. So we'll have the user query and then find one method and we want to find it by ID, which is stored in our request object. So right now there is no such thing there, but our authenticate middleware make it happen. So after we've done this, usually when you work with database uh, querying, we need to check if we found any user. So if there is user, then you want to respond with JSON, and I will just hard code user object to it again because I prefer for users do it manually. So I will have ID, that is user ID. I will have email, which is user email. And I have username, which is user username. And that's it. But if we didn't find, then we need to respond with status maybe 404. And for now, just with empty JSON. Okay, that will not work because we do not have authenticate middleware yet. So I'm going to require authenticate from, let's say, middlewares authenticate. Let's save it and let's create middlewares authenticate.js. The middleware, so we're gonna export here, exports, the middleware. And middleware is just the basic function that takes request and response as our routes do because basically in Express routes are middlewares. They just the at the end of the chain. And the third parameter is the next callback that we need to call if we want to proceed to the next middleware. 
So in our case, if everything's okay, we just need to run next. If something is bad, we halt and we never run next, but instead we use the response object. Okay, so in our case, we fake it, right? We're not working with actual real JSON web token. We have the token that looks like this, valid one. So first thing that I wanna do, I want to get the header from our request. So that's request, headers, authorization. Next thing I want to check. So if there is no header, so defensive programming here. So if no header, then I want to return response with error status. Let's say 401, so it's unauthorized. And with JSON, maybe we'll have some kind of errors and global key for it. So the global errors, no token provided. Okay, so we check for header. If there are no header, we respond with status 404 and we return. So that means that no other middlewares will be invoked including our route. Otherwise, I want to get the token itself. So the token is, uh, you remember that the token in our case is bearer and then the token, right? So here I want to have the header and I want to split it by space and take the first item, well, the second, right? But it is the first in the uh, array. And then I want to get, because token is not, not a simple token, but the valid colon one. So I want to get the user ID itself by splitting the token. So I split the token, in this case, by colon. And again, I just take the first. After that, I want to enhance request object. So I'll do request user ID equals to user ID. And after that, everything's good, so I will just run next. And that's it. This is our fake middleware. So in the real world and later when we get to the actual authentication, we need to get the token, we need to validate this token. So to make sure that it's valid with secret key and that it's not expired, etc., etc. And then when it's done, we'll have the decoded version of this token inside of which we have the user ID and we'll just, the same way, we'll just enhance request object with it and we can use it in our route, like we do here. So as you can see, all we need to do in the future is just to change this authenticate middleware and we're good. Okay, so everything's saved and everything should work. So let's try it out. So now if I try to load the page, it still doesn't work and it still have this current user 404. And that happens because we make a request to the local host 8080, but our API is on the port 8989. So we need to use proxy. Fortunately for us, UCLI comes with a proxy functionality. So I'm going to open new tab here, and I will go to the view project, open it in editor. And let's have a look. Here you can see we have the viewconfig.js file. If you allowed Linton safe, you will not have this file. So you will need to create it. So here I will specify dev server as an object and inside of it proxy, which is going to be HTTP localhost 8989. Let's save it. Now, just to make sure I'm going to restart the server and of course I need to start the server for the API so I will just have split here and I will go to uh, API and run yarn serve as well so now it's so now it runs on localhost 8989 and view application should proxy to it so let's go to browser reload the page loading Okay, so we have something's going on. We have the pending request. So usually it means that we have an error somewhere. And you can see that user is not defined. So that's a good news because now you can see that our view application actually sends requests to our API, which is cool. And uh, yeah, we just need to go to the auth and see what's going on. Of course, I use user model here, but I never actually imported it. 
So let's import user from models user. Let's save it. The server is started, so I'm going back to here. Let's roll the page and we have welcome. Nice. So you can see here that we make a request to the current to fetch current user. In the review, you can see that we have the user model here. And if we go to the view and to our viewx, you'll see that it was populated. So our mutation worked as well. And of course, we'll use this information to determine whether the user is authenticated or not as well. So we've done a lot on the server side. So now it's time to get back to our view application. In the next episode, we'll tweak Bootstrap theme a little bit to make it a little bit more pleasant to work with. See you then.